When you're working with multiple layers, such as in this project, the layers project from the Chapter 4 folder, uh, it could be just a mess. And, you know, in this project, we only have 28 layers, which in terms of After Effects is not that many layers. You could imagine if we had another two or three characters here and maybe some animated elements in the background, we could easily add another 40, 50, 60, 70 layers. So learning how to manage tons of layers like this will really aid in your efficiency. And that's the focus of this movie. Some of the biggest helps are actually built into the timeline panel. This little column right here is made for soloing objects. Again, this top row here is just for reference. We actually click the switch right here, but the icon at the top tells us what this little spot does. So if I go to the mustache layer, for example, I can click the solo icon for that and see just the mustache. I can then adjust the mustache, uh, animate it, move it around, add effects to it, whatever I want to do to it, and I only get to look at the mustache. Now, the name solo implies that you can only look at one layer at a time, but you actually can solo multiple layers, as illogical as that might seem. So I might come down here to the head beard layer and solo that as well. So I can look at the head, beard, and mustache layers just by themselves. As soon as I click the solo switch for these two layers, then they disappear. Note that you can only solo visible layers. If I were to take off the visibility of the head beard layer, which turns our wizard invisible, which is kind of cool, then the solo switch is gone. We cannot solo invisible layers. So once I turn it back on, then I can solo it. Now, another great benefit is this shy button up here. By creating shy layers, you hide them in the timeline panel, but you keep them visible in the composition panel, what you're viewing here. Right now, if I scroll up to the top, you can see that the button is switched. That means that there are layers that are shy. So if I click this button, we can actually see that there's a layer called Adjustment Layer 1 that was hiding. You also notice, if you look at this icon, that there's also a similar icon right here for each additional layer. Well, as we click this switch, it determines which layers are shy. So let's say I want to hide the hat left eyebrow, right eyebrow, right eye, left eye. Let's say I want to hide those layers. And you can see the icon is kind of like this little guy peeking over a wall. And once you click him, he gets shy and he hides back behind the wall. So once these layers are shy, then you enable shy for the entire composition and those layers go away. Also, let's say, for example, you just want to work on the hat. I'm going to actually unshy this and unshy the hat, then re-shy the entire composition. Then I can just click this, and as soon as I click the icon, the layer is hidden because I have shy on currently. So I can keep doing this until all these layers disappear, and I'm working only with the hat layer. Now, a good way to think of this whole shy thing is it's basically the opposite of this visibility icon. The visibility icon keeps the layers here in the timeline panel, but makes them invisible here in the composition panel for viewing. The shy button does the exact opposite. It keeps things visible in the composition panel for viewing, but it hides them in the timeline panel. And personally, folks, this shy feature is one of my favorite of all of After Effects' housekeeping tools. It's so awesome to have 28 layers and only have to look at one of them. Anytime you click this button, you get all 28 back. Love it. Now, one other switch I want to cover is this lock switch. Oftentimes when you're working, especially with character animation like this, you might be working with, let's say, an eyebrow. Let me use my wheel mouse to zoom in a little bit closer here. Also use my middle mouse button. I'll hold that to get the pan tool and move this over. Now, let's say I want to play with his right eyebrow. Again, with characters, you always refer to things from the character's perspective. So even though this eyebrow is on our left, uh, it really is his right eyebrow, and this was uh, set up incorrectly. So this is actually the left eyebrow layer, even though technically in character animation we refer to this as the right eyebrow. So let's say I want to work with this, but there's a lot of other stuff around this area that I could accidentally click to select. What I can do is click this padlock icon for the right eyebrow, right eye, left eye, and also maybe the head. So now when I click on this, I can easily move this uh, right eyebrow around without messing anything up. And if I click outside of it on accident, I don't have to worry about messing anything up or moving anything I don't want to move because it's all locked down. I'm just going to hit Command Z or Control Z to undo that. Back that up a few times. And I'll also unlock these layers. 
Finally, let me give you a couple quick shortcuts for selecting layers in the timeline panel. First of all, you could use Command or Control on the PC, up and down arrows to select layers. So I have the left eyebrow layer selected right now. Let's say I'm doing some work here uh, in the composition panel, so I don't want to bring my mouse all the way back down there and then all the way back up again. What I can do is, do is hit Command down arrow and then keep hitting it to go down to select layers that are down or command up arrow to select layers that are up or I could also just press the layers number on the numeric keypad so if I want to select layer number seven for example I could just press seven on the numeric keypad note that this will not work on the numbers on the main area of the keyboard only on the numeric keypad if you want to select double digit numbers such as 13 then simply type 1 3 really quick so those are just a few tips on how to work with multiple layers in a composition. Next, we'll take a brief look at blending layers together.